Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to this fifth installment of a series called The Cult Leaders Toolbox, where we take different tactics that cult leaders use to captivate their followers and unfortunately to sometimes hold them captive. So today is episode five entitled Authoritarian Leadership. So cults love control. They'll use many tactics to control. Um, usually in the beginning, there's things like love bombing and other positive things like um, a good uh, sales tactic, such as I have the truth, I have this great program, I have all kinds of things that will give you fulfillment and make you happy. And as the frog boils slowly, oftentimes they will start to lower the hammer, lower the boom on you and set up a, an authoritarian structure. So authoritarian is, is uh, defined as favoring or enforcing strict obedience to authority at the expense of personal freedom. So you, you don't sign up for a cult. You don't sign up for something that is going to uh, potentially um, take away all your personal freedoms. But unfortunately, as you get very involved in a cause, oftentimes you're willing to sacrifice a lot of personal freedoms for the cause and for the leader, unfortunately. And it can be at great cost to your own health, well-being, to your family, to your mental health, and pretty much to your life. So today we want to we want to talk about um, a certain person. And as you you all know, if you've watched these toolbox videos before, it is story time here at Coffee, Cults, and Crafts. So I want to tell you a little story about a guy named William. William was born in 1934 in Hinsdale, Illinois. His father was a manager of an engineer firm. Uh, that, that was William, William Sr. And he was very religious. And he had six children. And uh, William Jr. was the third of six, I believe. And he was brought up very religious, and in fifth grade, William decided uh, that he felt like he was a terrible sinner and wanted and felt the need to have a personal savior. So he became born again, and uh, he said he had Jesus in his heart, and Jesus was calling him into the ministry. So when he was 15, he started to uh, volunteer for uh, different charity um, causes and was ministering to youth. And he um, ended up going to Wheat Wheaton College and graduated in 1957 with a master's in Christian education. So as time went on, he uh, worked in various ministry capacities, mostly with gangs and in uh, youth groups, in camps, in various uh, places that had a lot of youth. And he developed his own style. He developed his own uh, curriculum. And he had a ministry in 1961 that he started. It was called Campus Teams. And he traveled around and he started to develop a, a teaching style and a curriculum that he later um, named the Institute of Basic Youth Conflicts. And he ended up um, eventually naming it IBLP, Institute in Basic Life Principles. And um, this guy, William, uh, we'll call him Bill. Bill Gothard, none other than Bill Gothard of the IBLP. And uh, you might recognize that name from the the Duggar, um, the uh, Shiny Happy People documentary. And this was the ministry slash cult, we'll call it, that uh, the Duggars followed. And also, unfortunately, uh, the cult that I um spent 16 years in, also followed very closely the Duggar, um, sorry, the um, the IBLP Gothard principles. So back to uh, Bill Gothard and 
in the 1970s, he started doing these seminars and he would travel around and book uh, very large venues and he would speak to people, to crowds, anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 people at a, at a time. And he was uh, just teaching all these principles. He had some things that were very popular and then it would get people interested. And then he was a firm believer in, uh, well, basically authoritarian structure, but he called it the, the umbrella of authority. So he had this teaching about the umbrella of authority, where if you came out of the umbrella of authority, terrible things would happen to you. Uh, the devil would attack you and destroy you. So you needed to stay within the author authority structure that God had given you. So it turned into a whole um, series of ministries and curriculum and uh, precepts and rules and all kinds of things that people came under that eventually were quite oppressive. So you may have heard different uh, things that happened with the Duggars, how their children were subjected to um, very strict rules, how they were all homeschooled, and that was a requirement um, in the IBLP ministry. Uh, they also um, had a very top-down authority structure where women had to be subservient to their husbands. They had to wear a certain type of clothing and um, just be quiet and always have a smile on their face. And it it's just, it's very oppressive and it's still going on today. So why, why are we talking about this? Why is this so important? Um, one of the things that really struck me that I really wanted to talk about this is my my husband has often described Bill Gothard's ministry as the quote smart bomb of fundamental Christianity. And I totally agree with that analogy. Um, the reason being is because when Gothard started his ministry, he was he he still is considered non-denominational but when he started doing his seminars he appealed to people of all different denominations of christianity so they would come to his seminars and they would listen to this um these teachings this <laughs> tripe as i would call it and they would take it back to their churches and it was all kinds of conservative and fundamentalist churches um, all different denominations. You had Baptist, Pentecostal, Methodist, ev every type of denomination, a lot of um, non-denominational churches. And there were, uh, there is believed to have been over 2 million alumni of the, of the Bill Gothard seminars alone. So if you think of it, 2 million people have attended his seminars and then went and, and you know, basically preached his teachings to their friends, their families, their churches, and their, their own children, and their children's children. So it's basically ha has affected millions. So these teachings are, they're very um, complex in some ways. So I would like to do a deep dive into this and uh, different things that happened. Uh, if you know the story, Bill Gothard himself uh, never married, and he basically told everybody else how to raise their children and how to be married, but he was never married himself, and he was accused of uh, sex, well, sexually harassing um, very quite a few women, dozens of women, uh, I think 34 to be exact, and uh, he fell from grace, as they say, he has been displaced, but his ministry is still out there. And his homeschooling um, curriculum called ATI is still being used to this day. So he's still exerting a lot of influence and power, and his ministry goes on. It's very um, well respected in conservative and fundamental Christian circles, and they 
they pour a lot of money into into this place. And there's there's so many um, abuses and things that have been done in the name in the name of God that I um, feel like it's it's definitely something that needs to be addressed and and talked about. So um, if you're watching this on uh, a replay or after I've downloaded it for a day or two, uh, this will already be um, able to be seen. But tomorrow I will be on a live stream with our very own Clearwater Chad and our our good friend Peggy Brott, who um, has a lot to bring to the table. She's done a lot of research on the IBLP, and we will be doing a deep dive live stream about Bill Gothard and IBLP and the Duggars and how um, this call has really affected so many people. So I hope you will tune in, and thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.